the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers surveyed the Chickamauga Island site in the 1920s as a possible site for a dam to protect Chattanooga, which had suffered serious flood damage in 1867, 1875, 1886, and 1917, and also to enhance navigation along the river. When the Tennessee Valley Authority was formed in the mid-1930s, it assumed control of navigation and flood control operations in the Tennessee Valley. After extensive surveying, TVA chose the tip of Chickamauga Island over several other sites surveyed by the Army Corps in the vicinity. The Chickamauga project was authorized December 31, 1935, and dam construction began January 13, 1936. The construction of Chickamauga Dam and its reservoir required the purchase of 61,350 acres of land. 6,030 acres of which were wooded and had to be cleared. 903 families, 24 cemeteries, and 81 miles of roads had to be relocated. An embankment was built to protect parts of Dayton, Tennessee from the reservoir's backwaters, and several roads and buildings in the town of Saudi were relocated or modified. A total of 39 bridges affected by the reservoir were either raised or moved as well. The navigation lock at Chickamauga Dam was designed by the Army Corps of Engineers, and was based on the lock design at Guntersville Dam. The lock was initially 60 by 360 feet, although the dam was designed in a way that allowed a larger 110 by 600 feet lock to be installed if increases in river traffic ever required it. Chickamauga Dam was completed and its gates closed on January 15, 1940, constructed at a cost of $42,065,000. The lock was placed into operation on February 26, 1940, and the first generator went online May 4, 1940. Two recreational areas named Booker T. Washington State Park and Harrison Bay State Park were developed as segregated parks along Chickamauga Lakes shores with the former originally being for African Americans and the latter originally being for Caucasians. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. The President of the United States today dedicates the newest link in the Great Tennessee Valley Authority River Control System, Chickamauga Dam near Chattanooga, Tennessee. From a visit to his home in Hyde Park, the Chief Executive has come to this southern mountain area by special train to speak at the celebration dedicating this, the sixth of the TVA dams to be built by the government in the regulation of the Tennessee River. Two years ago, President Roosevelt visited here, but at that time this dam was in its early stages of construction. Now it stands completed, a great concrete structure a mile long, 130 feet high with navigation locks at one end and a power plant at the other, and rising above it a lake covering many thousands of acres of land. Some 30,000 people are standing here in the warm morning sun now, ready to hear the President's address. Senator Kenneth McKellar of Tennessee will introduce the president. We present Senator McKellar. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me the keenest pleasure and the greatest delight to present to you the great author of the Tennessee Valley Authority who is here with us today. He has always been the friend of Tennessee and Tennesseans, just as he is the friend of all of the people of this country. I present to you 
the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Governor Cooper, Governor Rivers, members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives, Chairman Morgan, and members of the Tennessee Valley Authority, and you, the good people of Tennessee and of the other six states that abut this great valley. I'm glad to come here today especially because I took part in the laying of the cornerstone of this dam some years ago. But when I first passed this place, after my election, but before my inauguration as president, there flowed here, as most of us remember, a vagrant stream a stream sometimes shallow and useless, sometimes turbulent and in flood, always dark with the soil that it had washed from the eroding hills. This Chickamauga Dam, the sixth in the series of mammoth structures built by the TVA for the people of the United States, is helping to give to all of us human control of the watershed of the Tennessee River in order that it may serve in full the purposes of mankind. This chain of man-made inland seas may well be named the Great Lakes of the South. Through them, we are celebrating the opening of a new artery of commerce, of new opportunities for recreation, and I see all these new power boats right here almost at my feet as I speak. We celebrate the relief from the desolation of floods. We celebrate new low-cost energy that has begun to flow to the homes and farms and industries in seven American states. This national holiday, September 2nd, Labor Day, has been appropriately selected because in the miracle that man has wrought, labor has played a vital role. In all of these seven years, in heat and in cold, Men have grilled and blasted through solid rock. They've poured ton after ton of concrete, and they have moved mountains of earth. They have worked with the strength of their hands, and they have operated complicated machinery with every form of modern skill. Never once in these years Never once in this the biggest consolidated construction job ever undertaken directly by the national government, never has there been a substantial interruption in the continuance of your labors. This dam, all the dams built in this short space of years, stand as a monument to the productive partnership between management and labor between citizens of all kinds working together in the public wheel. Collective bargaining and efficiency have proceeded hand in hand. It's noteworthy that the splendid new agreement between organized labor and the Tennessee Valley Authority begins with the words, the public interest in an undertaking such as the TVA is paramount. It is appropriate, therefore, that we recognize this signal achievement on the day, Labor Day, when the whole nation...
pays tribute to labor's contribution to the democracy that we are now preparing to defend. To all of you, therefore, all of you who have contributed to make these structures possible throughout this beautiful valley of the Tennessee, to all of you, I extend the nation's thanks. The only note of sorrow that can properly be sounded on a great day like this, perfect in its scenery, perfect in, in the crowd that's come here today, perfect in our weather, but the only note of sorrow that can properly be sounded lies in the misplaced emphasis that so many people have put on the objectives of the government in building up this great Tennessee Valley project. It was at a press conference that I held at Warm Springs down in southwest Georgia way back in January 1933 after I had visited the valley with that splendid fighting American Senator George Norris of Nebraska, it was way back there, more than seven years ago, that I put his vision and my vision into words. For many years in different parts of the nation, I have been interested in what I had called already in 1933, the problem of better land use, a problem that necessarily had to include existing facts relating to harmful land use. In the valley of the Tennessee River, therefore, I had come to consider the facts of devastating floods that had existed for many generations floods that washed away houses and roads and factories, floods that took, take, that took great tolls of human life, floods that threatened the very security of Chattanooga itself and of many other communities on this river, on the Ohio River, and even down in the lower reaches of the Mississippi. I had studied the washing away of the wealth the wealth of soil on the main stem of the river, on its many mountain tributaries, and up in the creeks and the hills of the higher valleys. I had seen water commerce impeded by shoals, by winding, variable channels. I had understood the waste of potential hydroelectric energy. Yes, I had seen forests denuded or burned, but worst of all, I'd seen the splendid people living in parts of several states fighting against nature instead of fighting with nature. 